So commonly asked question that I get from a lot of new players coming into the game is I just got my Revelate units or I just got my Trailblazer units but I can't equip them. What's going on? I don't have enough dexterity. And so when we look at our units over here, you're going to see that it requires a certain amount of dexterity in order to equip the units. And likewise for weapons. So for example, the Genon weapon over here actually requires range defense. It requires 630. I'm very lucky I got 680, so I was able to equip it. And for example, the Atlas EX weapon, you need 150 tech power in order to equip the rod. However, for example, if I was using the Atlas EX sword, it would require melee power and if I was using a rifle it would require range power so forth and so on. However most people don't have any problem with power because you have your mags and you simply just put more power on your mag in order to equip the weapon that you need. Where most people get stuck at is the dexterity. Let's say you're not playing a braver, you're not playing a bouncer, let's say you're playing a teker. How are you going to increase your dex stat? Well in today's video we're going to be covering all the different methods in order to increase your dex stat. But first of all if you're new to the channel I upload PSO2 content daily so if you do play this game I'd really appreciate a subscribe as it really helps out the channel. Anyway without further ado let's begin the video. So there's going to be two parts of this video. I'm going to give the super simplified version and then I'm going to give a bunch of resources if you want to go super nitty gritty on it. But for most people, I think the super simplified version is going to be enough for you. In order to increase your deck stat or any stat in general, the easiest way is simply just by leveling up. You can see here that I'm a phantom main class, which means that I can't pick up a subclass. And you can see that I'm level 76 and my stats are relatively high. Now, if you're a new player just coming into the game and you do not have any of the other classes level to level 75 or above, your stats will not look like mine. The reason for that is because there are permanent bonus stat boosts when you get your characters to level 75. So let's hop over to my second monitor so I can explain it to you. So over here you can see PSO2 class boost. The site I used is the PSU blog over here. And over here is the perfect breakdown. So what happens is when you get to level 75 with a particular class, you will unlock a title reward that boosts certain stats for all classes. Each class's title rewards can be redeemed at the title counter. Each stat boosting effect will apply to all the characters on your account. You can find these class boosts in the class level subcategory at the title counter. Typically, the description of these titles list the stats in yellow text. You can only redeem one bonus per class across the entire account. Now, all of the terminology here is based off the JP server. So S attack is actually melee attack. R attack is range attack. T attack is tech attack. And there's melee defense, range defense, and tech defense, all right? So if you're level 95 already and you still don't have enough decks to equip your free Rivolate units, what you might be missing is maybe getting your Braver as well as your Bouncer to level 75 so that you gain an additional 60 dexterity. By having the 60 dexterity, you should have enough to equip your Rivolate units. Okay, And over here is a breakdown of all the different stat boosts you get whenever you get the class to level 75. Since the max level at the moment is level 95, it should not be very difficult to get all these classes to level 75, especially if you have a bunch of silver keys or gold keys sitting around. So when you get all of these classes to level 75, you'll benefit from the following stats. You'll get a total of 60 HP, you'll get 10 additional PP, you get 120 additional all attack, and you get 90 additional all defense, as well as 60 dexterity. So it's very, very important to try to get all of these classes to level 75 as soon as possible because all of these stats are gonna be permanent and it's gonna be across all your characters on the account. Now, leveling up your hero, Phantom or Etoile does not give you extra stats when you hit level 75. However, you do get some title rewards and when you get them to level 85, I believe you get some star gems. So it is in your best interest to level them up as well. However, the permanent stat boosts only apply from Hunter all the way down to Summoner. Only these classes over here will give you the permanent stat boost. And what's even better is you can split this among your different characters. So let's say, for example, my main character is a Braver. So I've got Braver maxed out. So I get the title bonuses and the stat boost. But for example, if my second character is a Tekker, then I do not need to level up Tekker to level 75 and above on my main character anymore. It's just account wide. As long as you have any of these characters to level 75, you redeem the title and you're good to go. Like what I did on my third character over here was I got 
ranger to level 75 i got the title reward then i deleted the ranger so i actually don't have a ranger character at level 75 or above but i do have the ranger title reward which gives me the stat boost so that is something you can do in case you do want to delete one of your characters and you're afraid that you're going to lose all your stat boosts you don't lose them as long as you've redeemed the title it's there forever and you're good to go Okay. Now another way to boost dexterity is of course through your mag. So you can see over here that my mag has 200 dexterity. So without the mag, I would only be at 651 dexterity, which means there may be certain units or certain weapons which I wouldn't be able to equip because I don't have enough dexterity. But in my case, because I play a phantom, it made sense to put 200 dex into the mag because I have a specific skill in my skill tree over here called phantom mag. And what this does is it converts my 200 dex into 200 melee power, 200 range power, and 200 technique power. And so it was a no-brainer to put all of my stats into dexterity since this skill over here converts everything for me. And the last tip I have for the super simplified version is your skill tree. You can see over here on the fandom skill tree there is PP Mega Up. So when I allocate more skill points into this specific skill, it increases my maximum PP. So you can see because I have 10 out of 10 over here, it increases my maximum PP by 20. And every class has different skill trees. So for example, when I go to the Braver over here, there's Dexterity up 1. So whenever I put a point here, it'll increase my Dexterity by 1. And then I've got Dexterity 2, so forth and so on. However, before you start putting random points into your skill tree, I highly recommend you check out the website in the description below, which has a breakdown for every single class and a recommended skill tree based on your playstyle. It's very, very important not to mess up your skill tree because if you do mess up your skill tree, you can't just reset it anytime. You do need to spend either a cash item to reset or you need to wait for Sega to give you a free skill reset token. And so it's very important not to mess up the skill tree, all right? I know you really want to equip your Rivolate units right now, but just be a little bit patient. Go to the description below, click on the link over there, check out what your recommended skill tree is for whatever your playstyle is. Let's say you're a Bow Braver, a Katana Braver, so forth and so on. And then just level up normally as well as get all your subclasses to level 75 and you'll be able to equip all of your gear, okay? All right, that concludes the super simplified version. Now we're gonna jump into the slightly more complicated min-max territory, okay? All right, if you care about min-maxing, it's important to come to the Arcs Layer skill simulator over here and look over here at the parameter information because each race has different specializations and it's also different between male and female. So for example, if we look at a level 95 Braver over here with all the different class boosts, this is gonna be the base stats for a male human. However, if I select female human, you're going to notice that the stats change a bit. So depending on how hard you want to min-max, it may be beneficial to actually play a male character versus a female character. Because you can see over here, the male character's melee damage is 686, while the female's melee damage is only 665. So this is in min-max territory, but the difference between the damage is roughly around 5% is what I've heard. So let's say that you're playing a melee class. What you'd want to do is you want to go down this entire list and see which one gives you the most melee power. And you can see right here that male Dooman actually has the highest melee power over here. So it'll give you 703 melee power at a level 95 Braver. Now, depending on what class you play, you might want to select a different subclass. So let's say you're playing Hunter Fighter. So Hunter is your main class and Fighter as your subclass. Then you'd select that. Or if it's the other way around, you'd flip it around like that. And you can see your stats over here that now gives you 890 melee power. But on top of that, you also want to allocate points into your skill tree over here to see what works best for you in order to min-max your melee power. However, depending on what class you play, you may want to focus on different stats. And by spending some time in the skill simulator over here, you'll be able to determine what is the best race to fit your playstyle as well as the best skill tree allocation in order to min-max your stats over here so that you can truly min-max your character in PSO2. Now, if you're a casual player and you really don't care about min-maxing that much, then you can totally ignore that segment that I just said earlier. But if you do care about min-maxing, then you may want to think about re-rolling your character in order to gain that 5% extra DPS increase. But again, you don't have to do that because that is min-max territory. So if you don't truly care about min-maxing, it's not a big deal. I personally like to play female characters, which have less melee damage, but I don't care because to me personally, fashion is the true end game. But yeah, that's pretty much everything I want to cover in today's video. Hopefully it was helpful. If it was, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe. And I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video.
Bye. What can I say except you're welcome for the heels